Well, hello, folks. My name's Chaz, and today I'm going to show you how I make my uh, circular pendants. Um, these are fairly simple to make. They look really good. They look a little more complex than they really are, but uh, this one is made from Bacote. It has uh, uh, just a, a hole in the center where you can uh, loop a leather cord through there. Um, I'm going to start with a piece of Bacote that I have prepared here. As you can see, it's just about the same size um, as the pendant. Um, I'll do something a little different. There's a lot of gadgets that you can buy on the internet uh, to help you make these pendants. Uh, but I have discovered that uh, with a simple face plate, uh, waist block, and a pin, uh, I can do these things uh, fairly reliably and I don't spend a whole lot of money on, on other gadgets. So what I have here is a piece of Bacote cut to a square. I've drilled a hole in the center of it, very center. It's a, a 3 30 seconds hole and it matches the 3 30 seconds pin that I have on my waist block here. And that, that protrudes a oh, you know, quarter of an inch or so. It doesn't have to stick out a long ways. It just needs to be able to register the block front to back. So I'm going to put the the waste block on here and I'm gonna go ahead and get a piece of Turner's tape this is um, miraculous stuff comes in a roll like this you can buy it uh, two inch wide you can buy it one inch wide I'm gonna just pop that right over my registration pin take a razor blade which helps quite a bit and peel that backing off. I also try to make sure that I don't have a bulge of tape there. And then I'm going to take the smoothest side of my Bacote. This is sawed on one side relatively smooth and rough on the other. I'm going to take the relatively smooth side and I'm going to put it against the tape for a little bit better adhesion. Bring up the tailstock. Put a little pressure on that. Now the, the tailstock, uh, what you didn't see before, is I've got this sort of standard revolving center. Um, and I've taken the, uh, the center pin out of that center. So all I have is just the ring. Don't need the center pin because the registration is being done by the 3 30 seconds pin in my waste block. Okay, so I am going to just quickly with my bowl gouge here rough this. And I want to take it down to my, my final diameter, whatever diameter I want this thing to be. I like these to be a little bit big, um, but at this point you want to take it down to your final diameter. And then I go ahead and remove the trail stock and I'm going to true up this back face and get it nice and flat because I need adhesion um, when I flip this thing around so I want this back as flat as possible. the high spots and that tells me where I still need to remove a little material. Alright, I think that's just about got the back nice and flat. I don't have any uh, 
bad spots in it. Now I'm going to round the corners off because I, I won't be able to get at these when I flip this piece around. So. So there, I'll just round that corner off. And now I can go ahead and sand. I'm going to take uh, just real quickly. Sandpaper. I'm sanding the back and the sides. anything that you might use for pins or whatever. I use Mylans. Uh, I think this stuff uh, tends to build a little better and it, it seems to dry a little better than some of the other friction polishes. I've used Hut, Crystal Coat, and uh, it just doesn't seem to work as well for me. There's the back, and that's looking good. Uh, now the trick is getting it off so we can flip it around. And uh, I'll use a little screwdriver, and I'll get under the tape and remove the tape. And of course, if you can get that tape to peel off, then your piece will peel off. So that's what we've got. The back is finished, and now we've got to flip it over and do the front side. Now, at this point, I'm going to redo the tape. Tape's cheap. Uh, I mean, a roll of the stuff doesn't seem all that cheap, but if you look at, you know, just about a square inch, it's not terribly expensive, and if it'll save you losing a piece. Okay, so here's the, the, the idea behind the center hole, is now I can put this guy on the lathe again, and I can be reasonably sure that it is perfectly centered. And when I begin to profile the front and taper the, that profile into the sides, um, I will, I'll be dealing with the very same surface on the sides that I was uh, when I Turn the back. Now, just for kicks, while I'm doing the sort of the heavy roughing here, I'm going to bring the tailstock up. Okay, got the corners 
knocked off of it. And now I'm just gonna try to put a nice gentle curve on the front. One, one thing to remember now is that this thing is being held on by masking tape and that registration pin, so it's not gonna stand a lot of shearing force. You wanna try to keep most of your force directed in. And when you're doing your shearing cuts, use a really light cut. So there's the basic shape and I am just going to put a little shear scrape on it, very light. And hopefully that will just make the, the sanding a little easier. So. No more giant bowl gouge. Now we're gonna do a little quick sanding here. probably fast forwarding at this point. Now, now you can see why we put that slight radius on the back, uh, the back corner, because there's no way for me to get in behind that now to round that off. And I, I don't want this thing to just be you know, a, uh, a dome that crashes into a straight back. I want to have, you know, some, some shape to the back of it as well, so. If a cote really polishes up nicely, it would be, uh, you could do this with just about any type of wood, but obviously the, the more figured wood like Bacote or Cocobolo, whatever. Looks really nice. Right, I'm gonna put a little friction polish on the front. You have to finish this thing as you go along because I'll never have the opportunity to do this on the lathe again. Once the back is done, I'll never see it again. And, and once the front is done, I never have an opportunity to apply finish to it again. So, all right. So there we go. And then again, using the tape to protect the finish and the surface of the wood, I just Take a screwdriver, something thin. You can even use a like a razor blade. And I'm just gonna inch this guy off of the tape. If you kind of work it around the perimeter, it'll come right off of there. I just don't want to get in a hurry and, and mar the back of it. Okay. So you can see here we have a nice profile. Let me see, I can hold that so you can see it. And we've got a nice profile on the side. 
and it's rounded nicely on the front and we've still got this hole. Okay, so this guy, we're done with it. He's done his job. He let us turn the front and the back without changing the axis, so. Now, we're gonna put another waste pipe. This one has a half inch hole right in the very center of it. <clears throat> and if you can imagine, this hole is going to be where my drill bit goes in, so I can look know exactly where the hole is going to be in my piece by imagining the hole behind the wood here. So I'm going to determine now that I want, like as in this piece, about a quarter of an inch of meat here on top of the, the pendant where the strap would go. You can judge this and I'll show you a little trick here that will allow you to set this distance. You can either have it a little thicker or a little thinner, depending on how large your piece is. But the way I do it is I'm going to take a pin, take a pen, pencil, marker, whatever, and I'm going to say I, I want roughly a quarter of an inch of meat at the top so I'll, I'll make a mark roughly a quarter of an inch outside of my hole. And then to that mark, I'll put my tape. And then I'll put my piece to the top of the tape and then that sets my distance. So the only choice now, the only, the only thing I have to decide now is where I want the hole in the piece. This one's got some crazy waves going through it. It's got a little eyeball here. Um, I think I want the hole in this relatively plain area. So I'm going to put the... get that lined up where I can see it from my angle. I line the top of the piece with the top of the tape and I know I should end up with approximately a quarter of an inch of space between the hole and the top edge. Now this thing's off center, it's got a curved surface and it's being held on essentially by double stick tape, masking tape. So, needless to say, we need to be careful from this point on and take our time. So, I've got my half inch bit and my Jacobs chuck. I'm going to slow the lathe way down. And I'm going to put my hand on the Jacobs chuck and the bit to kind of dampen any initial vibration that I might have when I enter this piece because I'm drilling on the side of a curved surface. I don't want to pop that guy off the tape. Especially want to go slow when you go through the back of the piece because any uh, any sort of splintering or any sort of tearing on the back side, um, you're going to have to sand out of there once we take it off the lathe. Okay, so you can see approximately a quarter of an inch, maybe just a little bit more. Um, between the, the hole and uh, our piece, the top edge of our piece. 
So now we're going to put this, uh, this interesting contour into the piece. And we're going to do that. I use a 3 8 spindle gouge that's been shaped sort of as a, as a detail gouge. Get it nice and sharp. Bring your speed up. And it's important now to remember that this thing is on with tape. It's not going to tolerate any sort of shearing action. Um, so I roll the, the flute over sideways and I am going to cut my way in. So take a look at this initial cut. And I just make a series from the outside in to establish the overall size of the recessed area. And this thing is it's something of an interrupted cut here because I've got a dome surface that's off-center. So give it a stop and take a look. And then you'll see that we've got our index hole here. So we've got to get that thing out of there. We've got to remove all of that wood. It includes that index hole. camera angle is probably a little bit bad, but you can see the, the action that I'm using. Alright, my index hole is still there. Just the, the, the bare little bit left of the right side. Beautiful. All right. 
back the, uh, the rest away and you can see the shape. Now I've got one little nick there. Looks like I tried to go in too steep. I'm going to flare that out a little bit and take that out. You can make these any uh, thickness you want. <clears throat> I've discovered you don't want to go too much past three eighths or so. They get a little awkward. You know, that, you know, that thick. Uh, now, when we're sanding, we don't want to touch this outside edge here because that's already been finished and polished. So be careful as you go in to only work on the surface that we've just cut. If your lathe reverses, it's not a bad idea to actually reverse it. best of your ability and apply some finish inside that hole. take this off the, the waste block by grabbing the tape and pulling the tape off. I need a little extra muscle there. Get your screwdriver or your razor. Apply a little pressure to the back of it. All right. So now I just need to clean up the inside and be very careful that we don't touch the back surface. Just want to get that that edge. Where the drill bit came through and where my gouge was 
cutting against that back plane. Can leave a couple of uh, chipped areas. It's another reason you want to go really slowly when you get back there. Just a wee bit of finish in there. And you've got the uh, the basic pendant. So I'll just show you how I do it. I'll take a leather cord and Put the leather cord, just, just double it in half, put it through the hole, and then you push the ends through, and there you go. All you need is a clasp on the ends of those on the leather, and you're done. All right, so if you have any questions, um, feel free to email me. Uh, put the email address up uh, right here. <clears throat> and otherwise, thanks for watching.